everyone. Getting things loaded on here. Um, and wait for people to jump on before we get going. I am really, I really like what I'm going to be presenting to you today. Uh, it's about Amigos Muertos by Jonathan Shannon. And it's a quilt that you've probably seen. And there was a ton of controversy behind it. A ton. So I'm pleased that you're choosing to spend time with us here. And before we get going, I want to uh, show you <laughs> something I saw on Facebook. You know, I can, I can, uh, I can, let me, I'm going to put comments on. I can, what's it called? When I can say, yeah, I can spend time on Facebook because if I didn't, I'm not going to find this stuff for you. So look at this one, you guys. Remember? <laughs> I wonder what grandma, what grandma sewing machine, whose that is. I thought that was just hilarious. Okay, not a featherweight. It looks like an industrial machine or something. So I want to show you something really neato. My girlfriend Robin, who I often talk about it, who saved my life with my parents, loves birds. She has a million, not a million birds, but a lot, but she has two that are really like pets. Um, this is Sebastian, and they, you know, sit on her head when she is sewing. They will flitter around the room. You, they'll walk up your leg. She can hold them. In fact, we went yesterday, and she had just given one a bath, so the feathers were all over the place. I mean, they love her. And even when they travel in their RV, the birds come along. So what happened was, I okay, Robin's birthday was Saturday, and it was it was a significant one. And so I thought, okay, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? <clears throat> and so again on Facebook, I found this. It, Rondi, it is on um, Buena Vista. Not I thought it was Marina, but it's on Buena Vista. And it's this adorable flower cart that you go and the flowers are there and you make your own little bouquet and and then you just, you pay up and it's all fresh cut, fresh farmed. It, it, I, I think these are my most favorite kind of flowers on the face of the earth. So I went out on Friday and I said, okay, on your website, I saw there was an adorable little like nest then with flowers in it. I would love to get that. And she goes, ah, oh, I don't do that till Mother's Day. And I was hoping if I, I was hoping she'd say, but for you, I'll do it. Well, that didn't happen. And so I said, I said, she said, go to Alden Lane and see if they've got nests or whatever. And I'm driving home going, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have so many birds here. It's ridiculous. In fact, my mom collected birds, not real ones. And so there were boxes labeled birds that were about this big and I couldn't find them. I couldn't find them. And then I found them. I decided, so let's take a look again at her crazy little bird, Sebastian, that I was going to take one of these birds and I was going to paint it uh, like her bird. And then Lennox and I went out and got flowers at that place and put the bird in it. <laughs> that makes me so happy. <laughs> It's it's adorable and it's creepy on top of it all, all in the same breath. There it is. There it is. Okay. Elizabeth sent me this and she was cleaning out her magazines. And look, that was from um, Carol Breyer Falbert, Fallert, uh, Rainbow Sherbert. And it was when they, it was during the Fairfield Fashion Show. So that was in it. Gosh, that that is just fabulous. Um, when the Fairfield fashion show ended, Bernina took it over. And I'll tell you, this was a very tame outfit for that in that time. So I thought that was really cool. And then Jamie sent me this. Look at this. Look at this. I found this on, again, Facebook, why I stay on it all the time. This is spectacular. By the way, it's not that big. You know, when I looked at it, I thought, well, this has got to be like, you know, 
40 by 60 or something like that. No, it, it's not. It's a small piece. And unlike the applique, which of course is her face, there's also um, a lot of piecing going on. I think this is spectacular. And I asked her for permission to share it, and I forgot to look to see if she said yes. So sorry, Jamie, if you said no, but the world needs to see that. Okay, uh, and then I have really great news, at least in my humble opinion. I have been doing patterns back in the day for JWD Designs, and probably my most favorite, the most popular pattern was this one, Alex Anderson Classics Holiday Lights. It's the first one they did, and Rhonda, you're going to like this. I originally made this quilt for Margaret Peters' Christmas um, book, remember that? And the patterns are gone. They're sold out. And to this day, I get, I want that pattern. Where can I get it? Where can I get it? Well, I found a gal, Virginia, who, and with permission, always with permission, um, could take the paper pattern. I had one Xerox copy left, copies, and I sent it to her, and she has put it together so that it will be digitally available. I'm very very excited about that. Uh, it, we're just doing editing and things like that, but the bones are done. And my thought is that might be an interesting fall project for us to all do. I don't know if everybody out there already has this pattern and has made this quilt, but it is a classic. And I think, and Rondi can correct me if wrong, um, I think that book from Margaret was probably 25 years old. I have the original quilt. My daughter-in-law has this quilt and I just, I think it's the best of all. Um, the original had black background. I asked her if I could borrow it back so we could teach it. And the answer was yes. So stay tuned about that. Okay. Yes. Okay. So what we're going to be talking today about is Dia de los Muertos or Jonathan's Quilt, Amigos Muertos. Um, and what I want to do, because not everybody is familiar with this holiday, and it's a pretty high holiday in um, Mexico. If I say something wrong, feel free to correct me in a loving way. I did a lot of research on it, and I knew the basics of, basis of the whole thing, but I found out more interest, other stuff that was very interesting to me. Anyways, uh, Dia de los Muertos is on November 1st or 2nd. You often hear it referred to as Day of the Dead. It's actually a two-day holiday. The first one is a Day of the Dead, and then there's All Saints Day. That's the second, and that is dedicated to the saints of the church who are in heaven, and then there's All Souls Day that I think goes in with this this three thing, this three deal. And those are people who have passed, but have not yet ascended to heaven. And so you pray for them. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. It is a, it's not a day like Halloween where it's all, you know, spooky and ghouls and, you know, things like that. Um, Halloween, death, darkness, ghosts, witches, candies, costumes, Day of the Dead is explicitly about afterlife and the remembrance of the person. So as long as they are remembered, they are still with us. It's also a day where the belief is they will transition to earth and be with the families. So how do families celebrate this? So oftentimes you will find um, graveyards that have been decorated and a lot of there's a lot a lot a lot of that particular fabric or fabric, flower the marigolds that is a very um, very popular part of the celebration so there's somebody's gravestone that they've decorated and oftentimes families come and there's picnics and there's parties and and all that good stuff here is a very elaborate one very elaborate one uh, you don't, but you can also do it in your house too. Adair, my daughter has done it. So here is a cross in Mexico that's made of the marigolds and the skulls. It is a very, very important holiday. Here's a home altar. 
<clears throat> see, this is pretty elaborate here. Elaborate here, and you'll see sugar. You'll see sugar skulls. There's a usually a sugar skull for every person that's represented. You'll see pictures. You'll see there's the marigolds. You'll see colors, and we're going to get into colors in a few moments. Um, yes, and then Paul Coco is a wonderful animated movie that is really fun to watch, even as an adult, and will give you even more insight if this is all new to you. There's also, when, when a dare would do it, she'd say, okay, what was Pop Pop's favorite food? And that food would be on there, that drink would be on there, and you're welcoming them back. And for generations to come, people are not forgotten. Now, the thing that I want to make sure I've got, okay. Um... Oh, the marigolds, they go back to Aztec times, that, those flowers. Um, and they're typically magenta and oranges and things like that. However, let's look at that. So pretty. Let's talk about all the colors have meaning. Oh, I wanted to show something else here. Um, okay, look at the top of this. And those are flags that are represented in Jonathan's quilt. And I forget what this um, Hispanic name of it is, but Nancy says what it is. So you will see that in this quilt. Okay, and then here are some colors. Okay. So everything, everything is with meaning, as with purpose, and it's all about you know, honoring those who aren't here. Okay? So, given that information of all of this that I'm telling you, Jonathan made this quilt, Amigos Muertos, and it was extremely, extremely controversial at the time. And if you were quilting during that time, you'll remember. But let's take a look. We got a really great piece from Nancy and the San Jose Quilt and Textile Museum. So we're here with part two, Jonathan Shannon. And this particular quilt has a lot to talk about it in so many ways, but let's just start with the basics of what this quilt was about and his intentions. Yes, yes. So um, Jonathan, again, wanted to make a masterpiece, a best of show piece. And he did. And he did, <laughs> and he did. Um, and the theme of the show uh, that year was celebrations. Mm -hmm. and, and it was a major he, show. It was a major show, and he had lost a lot of friends to AIDS and one recently from cancer. So he decided to make something that would honor those people who were no longer living. And in the Spanish culture, Dia de los Muertos is a day that people go to the cemetery um, to celebrate. November 1st. November 1st, right. Um, and so, but when I saw it in person, I realized it was a little bit autobiographical, I think, because he starts with some of these Liberty of London fabrics down here at the lower part that perhaps were left over from when he made that shirt mm -hmm. um, in London when he was living there. And then it kind of goes into more um, world textiles, some batiks. Uh, but then, of course, it's surrounded by the papel picado, which are those paper cuts that they hang at the cemeteries on Dia de los I love Puertos. those things. Um, and the image is of dancing skeletons, and he said he always loved skeletons and dancing skeletons, so he wanted those in there. And then, of course, there's the altar with offerings, fruits, um, and imagery and candles. Uh, so it's a very traditional um, Dia de los Muertos celebration. Um, I can't show you the back right now. He realized he wanted it to be an AIDS quilt to mm -hmm. honor those mm -hmm. people, but he realized that someone looking at just the front of it um, would maybe not realize that. So at kind of the last minute, just before he was sending it off to the show, he took off a red ribbon of his, he, of his that he had been wearing for a couple of years, and he stitched it onto the skeleton. So it's pretty clear this is about... AIDS and honoring those who are no longer with us. 
Okay, so that's part A of the story. Now let's get to part B. Well, part B was um, when he entered it in the show, he felt fairly confident that the workmanship was good oh. enough to be accepted. Mm -hmm. And again, I'll tell your viewers, this is all hand applique, hand quilted, all by Jonathan. Uh, some of the pieces are machine assembled, the larger pieces. Um, but it was not only didn't win a prize, but it was not accepted in the show. And I remember, oh, that was a controversy. It was quite a controversy. Was it like the early 90s or something? Um, it was for the 1994 National okay, Show. Okay, okay. And this was, again, a work that he had spent a year making, six days a week, eight hours a day, um, truly a labor of love, masterful design, brilliant design, and really along going along with the theme of, of that exhibition. So, And um, the theme was, again? Celebrations. Okay, great. So... Uh, and so he, you know, he knew a lot of people in the quilt world, in guilds. He had taught around the world. He had traveled. He knew a lot of quilt makers. And so he let them know that he felt that his ideas were being censorship, censored, um, and that was not acceptable to him. And so he let people know and suggested that they write to the show's sponsors and say, we, we don't think this is the right thing to do. So I remember at EBHQ, mm -hmm. East Bay Heritage Quilters, he was there with a petition yes. and people were signing it left and right, left and right. But then it came down to one thing that hit me and that's that the show is privately held. Yes. And so you have a right to not invite or accept people into your show exactly. that you want. But then in getting ready for this, then you told me the part B and I went, Ah. Well, the part B is that if, if that is your stance and there are certain limits, things that you don't feel your viewers will be comfortable seeing, then you need to state that in your entry forms and so that people are aware of that. Okay, I wonder if, I wonder if shows are doing that now. You know, I don't know. I don't enter shows. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know about this stuff either. Trust me on that. No, I, lo I love, love, love this quilt. Who owns this quilt? Uh, so this is now, fortunately, uh, belongs to the San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles, along with, I think, most of the other quilts you've seen. Oh, this is wonderful. Yeah, yeah. We're delighted. And I also want to point out that air show that we looked at last week mm -hmm. uh, that's in the National Museum um, in Paducah, National Museum of Quilts, is one of the 100 best quilts of the 20th century. This is, is this another the second one? one. This is the second one. So Jonathan is one of only three people who has two quilts among that 100. And how long was he quilting for then? So this is what's so astonishing because he really only, he made his first quilt about 1987 and this was 1993. So in you know six, seven short years, he went from learning how to make quilts to, you know, two quilts that are in the 100 best quilts of the 20th century. Not bad, Jonathan, not bad. And sadly, he is not with us again. That's right, that's yeah, right, yeah. that's right. Well, this, this is just glorious. The history that you have here is amazing. It is, we really have um, the majority of the works that he created, as he said in a couple of interviews, and I have to uh, give some credit to Joe Cunningham, who did an interview with Jonathan in about 2000, mm -hmm. and Flavin Glover, who did an interview with him in the late 90s. And I relied a lot on those interviews for information about Jonathan because it's his spoken word. Um, and- uh, Did you ever meet him? I did, I did. did. I had the good fortune to meet him, but you know, only a couple of times. Sure, sure. He he'll a, remember you, he, he, just <laughs> like me. He'll remember me, right? He had a wicked sense of humor. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, he had a very short career. Uh, as I say, short but stellar. Exactly. Just amazing. Thank you so much. And and thank you so much for being involved in this museum. You you were the big cheese for quite a while, right? <laughs> I was just the director. That's not the big cheese. Oh, okay. Well, big the, cheese. The chairman me. of the board is the okay. big cheese. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much. This thank is fabulous. Thank you for coming. It's wonderful to have you here. Okay, some good questions came up. Um, Linda, yes, I think what I was showing you is kind of what's happening now. But because like the marigolds, I, when I did um, the history on it, it goes back to Aztec. So I suppose the pictures are something new. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not Hispanic. I know about it. But I went and dug deeper. So I hope I'm not, I hope I'm giving correct information. Um, also, an interesting thing that I, she, Nancy said was that he entered that quilt the next year and got into the show, but it wasn't in the competition. It was just in the show. And interestingly, he was on the board of directors at that point, 
And I don't know if I shared this last Monday. If you guys didn't watch next Monday, go back and watch it because it gives you a breath of who he is. Um, he took, I hope I don't get this wrong. He took the money from Air Show because um, this show gives you cash prize and they buy it. He donated the quilt to the museum and then took the cash prize and donated it back to people um, in the industry who could perhaps use, you know, help. So in other words, he didn't just keep all the money to himself, which I think is fabulous. Also, um, he also, back in the day, well, yeah, he would collect work from other artists. And he was very philanthropic about supporting those who are making their living from quilting. And so that was another exhibit that was there. It was really interesting to see what he collected and why. And Nancy Bavor will be our guide on that. And we will go through those quilts on Wednesday. Again, if you haven't watched last Monday, watch it. By the way, the eclipse here was a big bust. All right. So, yeah, help if you can help the museum, 10 bucks, you know, whatever. It's in San Jose. It's the San Jose Quilt and Textile Museum on First Street. All right. San Jose, California. So last, what, what day was the eclipse? I don't even know when. Last time we were on, I think it was Wednesday. I think Monday I canceled. Yeah, Monday I canceled because that was the eclipse. Um, by the way, we have friends that saw the whole darn thing. But I was really excited to tell you that we have the gnome pattern and kit available. So I'm going to start teaching it. Here we go. Whoops. I'm going to start teaching it. When I get back from Paducah, I think the beginning of May is a nice place to start. We have the pattern available. The pattern comes with the kit if you so choose to get the kit, and or you can get the pattern yourself. We did not include the yellow background in the kit because initially I thought going with red would be the thing to do, but then I thought, eh, it might be too Christmassy. So... I am thrilled with the kit, and one thing I really didn't point out, um, yes, working with wool is expensive, that's the truth, and for that I apologize to you. Um, but in the kit, you've got the pattern with the full-size piece that you can um, work from, and then you've got the threads, which I shared. One thing we did that's a little bit different than what other people do is there are a couple spools here where I knew you were going to have to use the whole thing, but there were other threads that you're only going to have to use X amount with, and so that kept the cost of the kit way down by us putting them on little skein holders like this. Also, the fabric, many times when you get kits, you have to, you know, buy a quarter, a fat fat quarter, fat this, fat that, fat eight. Well, we decided to cut the pieces so that, yes, there'll be a little leftover, but not a whole ton of leftover. And let me get this box out of, way, out of the way. These are Sue Spargo's hand dies. And as I mentioned, as I mentioned, we found out that our cutter is allergic to wool. So so if we do another one of these wool kits, we're gauging to see how well this does. If we do another one of these wool kits, uh, fortunately they can cut it for us because poor Madai was just having a horrible, horrible time with it. And last thing I want to show you, where is it? John said, bring it in in case you want to be a braggy grandma. So one of the gifts that I get is every year, Adair takes the kids' artwork and makes a coaster out of it, maybe gets like four. And then we get one, she gets one, other grandpa and grandma get one, etc. So William is in first grade, and this is the one I got from him. I think it's incredible. I think that's absolutely incredible. So I didn't want to make too much of a big deal over it because that would maybe hurt my granddaughter's feelings. So <coughs> I was just very, very happy about that. Thank you, Stella. I love this blouse too. Okay. What is the size of the back? Ah, we have, 
we are selling the back separate and we went around and around on it. What I would do, if you're going to be working with your own uh, wool, just wait until you piece it and then you can decide what the back needs to be. All right. And as I showed the other day, I had to piece my back together and then I covered it with lace. So that's no big deal. Don't mark my words on this. Okay. But it was something like 17 by 18 or something like that. All right. Um, yeah, make it with cotton. Debbie, do make it with cotton fabric. Do, please. I think, I, and I wouldn't just do, if I was working with cotton, I would probably use some printed cotton. And boy, oh boy, do I want you to share that in the forum. Okay. Oh, see, I love this, Carolyn. My grandson would have been 30 in December. My daughter, his mother, buys a birthday cake at the bakery to be gifted to somebody else anonymously. Yeah. Okay. Restream said, yes, the back is 16 by 17. Okay. And maybe you'd want to do it bigger and do scallops all the way around. I mean, I don't know. I'm going to get you going on it, but then I expect you to add your own little to the whole thing. All right. All right. So I will see you Wednesday. And again, I'm going to be in Paducah at the Quilter Select booth on Wednesday, Thursday, and half of Friday. So I'm, I haven't been there in forever. So I'm very, very excited about that. All right. Um, yeah, Lynn, use your own wools. We've got a digital pattern and we've got a paper pattern. The, the, the bummer with the digital pattern, they're the same price, is that you're going to have to tape it together because it's a digital download. The great thing about the real pattern is that it's on um, a big piece of paper, but now you got to pay for uh, shipping. So the choice is yours. Um, so what you're going to do, Alice, is you're just going to get the pattern as is, and you can decide if you're going to do it raw edge, if you're going to do it a turned edge, that's up to you. I'm kind of really excited to see what everybody does here. Okie doke. Have a great rest of day. And I will uh, see you Wednesday, and we'll see what kind of quilts Jonathan buys. And, you know, John, Jonathan Shannon, John and I collect quilts, too, and that might be a fun one of these presentations. Okay. Talk to you guys later. Peace. Thanks for spending your time with me.